The story of hoof stock genetics really starts when I was in graduate school working on a master's degree and I had a fascination with deer and the science behind deer breeding and I felt like it was an opportunity for me to do something that no one else was doing. So I bought a little bit of equipment and practiced on some does that I had harvested in the pasture of my grandpa's ranch and uh, essentially trained myself how to do laparoscopic AI in deer. Within two years, I had my first customer and from there, the rest is kind of history. Whenever I finished graduate school at Texas A&M, I went back to work with my father and he was considered a leader in the industry. To have a father basically teach you everything and not withhold anything from you is, is a unique experience. I use that knowledge, the skill sets I learned in college and, and my experience with my father to uh, eventually start the bovine division of Hoofstock Genetics. I had saved up some money and I bought the ranch in Ranger and over the course of the next year and a half we developed uh, the facility and the pastures and it turned into really a, a pretty unique situation that was in cow country. That story kind of unraveled from a traditional flush business, superovulation, transferring embryos into the in vitro division. And that technology changed the way I thought about our entire industry. The IVF essentially fast forwarded the opportunities for us as a company, but also the opportunities for our customers, genetics to be proliferated. We're doing projects, not only in beef cattle, uh, but we're working in dairies and the volume is just tremendous. The cow owners out there, as they see IVF as a viable tool, will continue to adapt the technology because it's more efficient and it already is very cost effective. Comparing traditional superovulation, flushing and embryo transfer uh, to the in vitro system is fairly easy. Your traditional system involves a series of injections of superovulation hormones over the course of four to five days, morning and evening, to achieve a superovulation in a cow who would normally ovulate one egg. And uh, at the end of the superovulation process, the cow's gonna come into heat by design and a technician is gonna AI that animal. But at the end of the day, it's labor intensive. The end product though is fairly predictable the results are consistent. To pick the IVF procedure over the superovulation procedure relies on some key factors. Number one, the reduction of labor. In our system of IVF, there is no preparatory shots. The cow literally can be loaded onto the trailer, straight out of the pasture, brought to us, collected the same day, and taken home to put back into her same pasture and the stress on the cow is minimal. Superovulation procedures can be done typically every six to eight weeks compared to every, safely every two weeks with IVF. We can literally double, if not more, the production from a particular female in a given period of time using the IVF technology. To certain breeds that we work with, Another major advantage to IVF is the savings of semen. We can typically take one straw of valuable semen and fertilize 150 plus oocytes that may have come from 10, 12, 15 different donor cows. The IVF process, once the cow is pulled out of the pasture, begins with the technique of ovum pickup or OPU. OPU is the use of an ultrasound guided transvaginal device that has a very small needle at the end which is used to suck the follicle out of the ovary. Being able to visualize what we're doing is something that a lot of our customers really enjoy and they will stand right next to their cow while that cow is being collected. Once we collect the oocytes off that female and we sort those oocytes and we grade those oocytes, they're moved to the in vitro lab. 
The basic idea there is they're growing the embryos in an incubator which mimics the physiological environment of a cow. And it's basically metamorphosized into better embryos, uh, which result in healthier, more normal calves. Whenever the eggs go to our lab, they've got to make us not only an embryo, but they've got to make us a pregnancy with that embryo. And that separates a lot of the IVF labs that exist. The RECIP program that's associated with Hoofstock has become a vital tool for us to grow the business and especially grow the IVF department. So many of our customers don't have enough RECIP cows of their own to withstand the number of embryos we can produce. Or those customers may be in a state long away from our location and they don't want to deal with the risk of shipping the embryos and trying to get them into their own RECIP. So they rely on us to put embryos into our RECIP cows and essentially sell them a pregnancy when the pregnancy is 90 days old. We're making sure we have the best quality cattle for our customers. If they buy a cow from us, I want them to want to keep that cow and use it in their herd for the next five years. I don't want them to be thinking, well, we'll use that cow when she calves and then we'll take her to the sale barn. So I've, we have a lot higher standard than most other people selling reset cows. Not that every single cow has been perfect, but we try really hard to make it that way. We are, as a group, capable of the technology and capable of the physical aspects of making our business successful. But if you can't go into your customer's house or your customers bring their cows into your house and make them happy, they won't come back. And can do a good job for 90% of your people, but if you don't take care of the 10% of the people that you do a bad job for, the word gets around. I don't look at us as a big company. It's a, it's a relationship we have. And that's at the end of the day what to me customer service is all about. The staff at Hoofstock is something that is hard to describe. Um, I don't have anybody that works for me that I feel like is just a body. They all have some kind of role, they have expectations, and I can walk away from what I'm doing and have 100% confidence that the job's still going to get done. I, I can't put in words how grateful I am for the commitment they give to me, the, uh, the skills they've learned quickly. We are such a diverse group of people, but we're all young, we're full of energy, we're hungry to go make this thing happen, and I'm super excited about it.